exciting golden copper explorer. So in this video, I want to share with you guys what I believe to be an exciting gold and copper explorer. Uh, I must disclose I own quite a lot of shares in this company. Uh, and I've owned this company for some time. I bought in at 3.1 cents. Now I have trimmed my position somewhat because I have made tremendous gains, but I am still holding a lot of shares in this company. And if the stock was to fall back at a particular price target uh, of mine, then I'd certainly accumulate more, but I'm pretty comfortable with the holdings that I've got in this. Uh, I will say this is not financial advice, guys. Um, do not uh, buy this stock simply because I own it. Do your own research. Seek your own independent financial advice. Uh, I do want to start sharing uh, some videos with you guys uh, around some particular stocks and uh, some particular investments and, and give you guys some more practical things to research. So this is an education video. Uh, this will help you do your research on this particular stock. And in future, uh, my next video, I'm probably going to talk about a nickel uh, play that uh, nickel stock that I've owned uh, that I actually have recently sold, but am looking at buying back into that uh, position. So stay tuned for that one if you're interested in nickel. Anyway, let's get to this video with uh, Dan Thomas uh, from Hammer Metals. Hammer is a copper and gold explorer. Uh, we're exploring in two of Australia's great metal provinces. In terms of our portfolio in Mount Isa, we've amassed some 400,000 tonnes of Jork equivalent copper resource. Uh, we have a team that have made world-class discoveries and to this day continue to make discoveries. We've built a dominant position in Mount Isa, some 2,600 square kilometres of tenure, and it's taken a decade to build this land position in what I would argue now is one of Australia's hottest exploration copper provinces. Importantly, we're fully funded. In terms of a snapshot of the company, I'll let you guys decide whether or not a $60 million market capitalisation for a company with 400,000 tonnes of copper equivalent metal with recent exploration success is a fair value. We've got $8 million in cash, our directors own 13% of the company and have participated in all of our recent capital raisings. They've made world-class discoveries before and they're looking to repeat the dose with Hammer. Our other shareholders have been with us for a long period of time and together with the directors make up for near on 50% of our register. Our trading over the last 12 months you'll see there has fluctuated between 15 cents and down as low as 4.2 cents um, with recent exploration success in the region, both within our portfolio and our neighbours, Carnaby, I think we're no better time to be considering looking at a company like Hammer. In terms of where we are, um, we're in between Mount Isa and Cloncurry. So to our northwest, we have the Mount Isa and George Fisher mines. To the northeast, we have Ernest Henry. To the southwest, we have Cannington. And as I said, we've built a position of some 2,600 square kilometres between these tier one major deposits. We're on two big structures. You can see down there to the southwest the recent discovery, the Nil Desperandum by Carnaby. We contain a, a five jork resources there, totaling that 400,000 tonnes of copper equivalent metal. Our strategy is twofold, really. The first one is to discover additional copper tonnes and move that 400,000 tonnes of copper equivalent resource through to a development stage. My gut feel is we're about two thirds of the way to moving to that development phase. And we'll do that by finding more high-grade deposits through the region. The second part of our strategy is to find a large tier one standalone deposit. This region certainly has the potential to deliver a tier one standalone deposit. We've had recent uh, extensions to our Kelman deposit. That news went out this morning. So we've identified mineralisation in areas outside of the Jork resource. So there's an instant win for us as we progress our way to that magic figure of an extra 50% of resource, or let's say 600,000 tonnes of copper equivalent metal. We've had recent exploration success at Lakeview in our joint venture with Sumitomo Metal Mining. And as recently as the weekend, we've intersected some high-grade copper mineralisation at a new prospect, which we hadn't drilled before. I mentioned our joint venture with Sumitomo Metal Mining, so a global mining copper powerhouse producing in excess of 250,000 tonnes of copper equivalent metal. They entered that joint venture in the middle of last year, I think providing some validation of our exploration strategy and what we're trying to achieve in the region. I mentioned a new discovery when I was preparing this presentation over the weekend. I took a phone call from our team on the ground and um, we had some good news. We had some massive, sorry, semi-massive to massive sulphide hit 
um, at a prospect called Ajax. Now, Ajax is one of 12 different targets we're drilling in our current drilling campaign. Um, and you'll see there we hit 10 metres at 3.5 per cent copper from an XRF recording on site uh, from only 25 metres of depth. Uh, that XRF reading is obviously subject to confirmation by an accredited laboratory, and we've rushed those samples through. We're obviously following up a 10 metre at 3.5 per cent copper hit. Um, we're prioritising our drilling at this prospect and we'll hopefully be adding more holes to this area as part of the current program. It is wet and it has been a pretty wet season in Mount Isa. Our ability to prepare some of those holes immediately is somewhat limited by ground conditions, but as soon as we're able to prepare, those pads will get in and we'll do some more drilling. We've put PVC down the hole, so we'll be able to do some downhole EM and try and identify what this potential um, system looks like and how big it might be. As I mentioned before, I think the Mount Isa region, with our neighbour Carnaby and their recent exploration success at Nil Desperandum, I think this is one of, going to be one of the go-to places in Australia for copper exploration. I mentioned before about building on our 400,000 tonnes of copper equivalent metal, and where are we looking to do that? Realistically, what we've done is we've set up a hub that's within 20 kilometres of the Trafalgar deposit. You can see the white feature running in between Mount Isa and Cloncurry. Uh, it is a road effectively running between the two. It runs through the northern part of our tenure, less than 20 kilometres from, uh, from those discoveries in those areas that we have already under resource. So Kalman is the pick of those resources, 350,000 tonnes of copper equivalent metal, and that is where we had uh, the recent extension to the resource. I mentioned our joint venture with Sumitomo. It's in this browner type area here, so they're earning a 60 per cent interest in that particular area. The other areas in the lighter shade of orange here is Hammers, 100 per cent on grounds. Exploration success at Neptune last year, 100 metres at half a per cent. Ajax sitting just to the north of that joint venture. Elaine, another copper resource, 10 million tonnes at 1 per cent copper plus some gold. And Jubilee, a joint venture with Glencore to the north where there's also some resource. So all of a sudden, within this portfolio, what we're looking to do here is to add to our copper equivalent metal bring in some more tonnes and get through to a scenario where we're developing in close proximity to a major highway and the associated infrastructure of power, etc. In terms of that trend, that trend that we're exploring pretty heavily at the moment, within the joint ventures Trafalgar, when I was here 12 months ago, I was talking about our exploration success at Trafalgar. We've been actively drilling this portion of the belt with our joint venture partner in our current drilling program. Neptune sits down here. You can see all of the little old mining symbols. These are old scale, old time working, small scale that were worked in the early 1900s by gougers taking out somewhere between 10 and 20 per cent metal, 10 and 20 per cent copper. A lot of these prospects haven't been drilled in 100 years. We're the first people to go in there and drill holes at a number of these, such as Ajax, such as Lakeview, um, all the way up. This trend is highly prospective for further copper mineralisation. I'll talk about the results at Trafalgar from last year. I mentioned the results at Neptune. Ajax, 10 metres at 3.5 per cent copper. I think this whole region has tremendous potential to add the copper tonnes we need to get to a scenario where we become a copper developer. In terms of the systems that we're chasing through here, um, this term has been used geologically in ISCG and iron sulphur copper gold system. These systems can throw up some tremendous grades, such as that 3.5 per cent that we saw in the drilling at Ajax, but also that we see at the bottom of our Kelman deposit down here. So this is at the southern end of our Kelman deposit, getting intercepts such as this, 7 metres at 23 per cent copper, plus gold, silver. Um, also, this system has molybdenum and rhenium, and we've heard a little bit about molybdenum from the two previous presenters. The price of molybdenum at $45,000 US tonne presents a completely different economic scenario when you start looking at deposits like this. A recent drilling I mentioned, we drilled to the north. So you can see up here we drilled four holes. All four holes hit copper, gold, molybdenum and rhenium mineralisation. Really broad widths, 50 metres at 0.6 per cent copper, a little bit of molly, some gold, other holes with uh, more predominant molybdenum in them, 0.12. We heard what an economic deposit or mineralisation looks like. These intercepts at um, low depths from 20 metres um, add good economic potential to the existing deposit that sits here, hopefully waiting to be developed. I mentioned before, what does that look like in section? So I mentioned before, there's loads of mineralisation that we're identifying here that haven't been identified before. So you can see three zones of mineralisation, 
to the north, there's clearly a fourth load of mineralisation that sits out there that doesn't sit in the resource. This is an immediate opportunity for us to come in, relook at the resource, reclassify it, add tonnes, get closer to that development scenario. The other thing we'll do with Kelman, it's been six years since we've done any drilling here and it's been some time since any previous study work had been done, but the current metal prices, copper at 10,000, molly at 45,000 US a tonne, obviously present opportunities to relook at the economics and the potential uh, mining scenarios that might happen here. We'll relook to do some metallurgy, potentially some ore upgrading through ore sorting. Um, I think the economics of this deposit, if they were studied at the current metal prices, would look quite different. I mentioned the IOCG systems and what we're exploring for here, a large tier one scale type deposit. Um, we have a number of these areas through our portfolio and we're continuing to do some good work on these systems. The Overlander system is one that presents some really broad uh, widths of mineralisation. All the characteristics you'd see of a typical IOCG system, red rock alteration, a lot of magnetite, uh, some uranium, some rare earth mineralisation, all the classic signs of a of an um, IOCG system. We have a number of these types of systems within a very large holding here, um, and they are all underexplored. Neptune's one such system. Again, this was in that Northern Minerals Corridor. I mentioned 100 metres at half a percent copper. We're currently drilling these prospects within the current program. We have, uh, through here, we have four discrete target areas targeting big magnetic features that sit in here with high-grade mineralisation sitting in rock chips on surface, copper and gold mineralisation. Uh, so testing targets such as Lady Cake. Interestingly, our um, intersection at Ajax was in a demagnetised zone. So again, there's a highly interesting zone through here which will target uh, another mag feature down here at Sirius and another one down here at Lady Amy. So these are high quality targets that we're testing in an active drilling program as I mentioned, some 12 targets in the current program. Our joint venture, um, just very briefly, last year I was sitting here talking about our intercepts at Trafalgar, 55 metres at one, 60 metres at one, plus some gold. Um, fantastic little system running through here, um, focusing on the magnetics that run from the south down here at some workings at Victory, all the way up to the springs. Um, we've drilled nine holes now at Trafalgar, all of them hitting mineralisation. We're currently stepping out from Trafalgar and we're drilling this target at about six different locations along this trend and we'll have that news flow coming out over the next uh, six to eight weeks, I'd imagine. Um, there's also outstanding results from a lot of work that we've done around some soil sampling, also a bunch of uh, geophysics that have been done, so there's lots of news coming up in, in the near term. What's ahead and what's next in Mount Isa? We're obviously drilling um, our program at Orion, Neptune and Sunset with more drilling to be done at Ajax. Um, I can't wait to see what that system potentially delivers following our initial drill hole there. Um, some IP surveys will commence towards the end of March, early April. Um, we've seen that work particularly well for our neighbours at uh, Carnaby, so we're hoping that that will unearth some, uh, some new news for us. Um, we've got some more drilling coming up planned for Kelman. Um, and we're reviewing some of our historical exploration uh, ground down to the south. I've spoken about the Sumitomo Metal Mining Joint Venture. There's lots of work going on there. Um, the next phase of that earning is an expenditure of one and a half million dollars. So there's more work to come from that particular set of work in the coming 12 months. I don't have long to talk about what we're doing in the Yandel region, um, but we have built a portfolio here in WA exploring for gold just south of the Bronzewing Gold Mine. We have been active here over the last two and a half years. Um, I probably don't want to talk about this too much. We did a three and a half thousand metre reverse circulation program, literally just south of the old Bronzewing mine here. Um, the 17 holes that we drilled in this area um, were remarkable in the fact that they contained no gold, literally not an assay above 0.1 gram per tonne. Have a look just how close you are to the mineralisation here. You're 300 metres away from a multi-million dollar ounce, I'm sorry, multi-million ounce ore deposit, and we got nothing in our drilling. So the one thing that I take out of that that I find extremely encouraging is maybe 300 metres this way, there's another big system, another big deposit that sits here. Um, there's a lot of work to be done here. We hit all the right rocks. We hit all the things that we thought we would. Um, it's an unfinished project area for us, and there's a lot more work to be done here on what is an lightly explored property um, sitting right next to a major mineral deposit here in WA. 
We are also um, exploring just north of the Aurelia deposit, which is um, was originally with Echo Resources, taken over by Northern Star. Um, they're looking to develop the Aurelia deposits and take the ore down to, I think it's Thunderbox. We've got a project here. We've got a very large gold anomaly to the north, um, extending over two kilometres um, with some good air core results there, eight metres at four, five at four grams per tonne. We think there's the ability to add a small-scale resource around the, uh, the, the target one area at North Aurelia. We'll be looking to execute a drilling program there to define that jork resource later this year. Um, I think this is a great target and a great area. Obviously, our main game is copper in Mount Isa at the moment, but I think a nice, um, a nice little add-on and potential win for our shareholders. So we're busy. There's a lot on. We have, um, we have a very active program in Queensland, 12 targets. Um, we've probably still got another four weeks of drilling in front of us to go. There's the obvious weight on assays there, um, but we've got some really exciting targets that we're hitting in that region, not only in our own program and portfolio, but within the Sumitomo Metal Joint Venture. Um, our IOCG system review is ongoing. Um, we're targeting new areas um, through the use of not only our historical work, but looking to um, reinvigorate it with some IP surveys and other geophysical surveys. Um, and in WA, I mentioned we've got some RC drilling um, coming up, whilst we've also just completed some soil surveys. So busy, 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 lots to look forward to in the coming 12 months as we look to make our progression from purely copper explorer through to a copper development company. Thanks very much. Thank you, Dan. <coughs> All right, so there you got a good presentation uh, on Hammer Metals and the assets that they've got. And I think they've got tremendous assets which have got uh, quite a lot of potential. However, I could be very wrong and that's, you know, it, it's risky investing in the exploration space. But one of the other reasons why I like uh, Hammer Metals, not just the assets that they've got, but their management. Uh, they, they've got an experienced team in the exploration space, uh, they've run and been uh, part of management on uh, other successful miners uh, like Gold Road and, and Sandfire. And Ziggy for mine is one of the best geologists in the game. Um, he found the um, the Greer Gold deposit, uh, the 6.2 million ounce uh, Greer Gold deposit. So uh, I certainly invest uh, in companies uh, that have got uh, good team members. So anyway, what do you guys think? Love to see your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. Once again, this is not financial advice, guys. You guys do your own research. I'm not recommending this stock. I'm simply sharing uh, a stock that I own. Um, definitely uh, not a recommendation to buy, to sell, or to do anything. Uh, you do your own research and get your own independent financial advice. Anyway, guys, take care, and I'll see you all again on another episode of Finance Uncut.